No soundtrack from the 1970s is complete without Leonard Skinner classics, Sweet Home Alabama, Free Bird, and Tuesday's Gone. But the cast of characters that made the sound so memorable was bigger than most people realize. Deborah Jo Billingsley was one of Skinner's three backup singers known as the Honkettes. They recorded and toured with the band from 1975 through 1977. My name is Deborah Jo, and when I went on the road with Leonard Skinner, there was the two Joes and our entourage. Every time somebody would say Joe, we both turn our heads. Mm -hmm. So Ronnie Van Zant, the lead singer, said, from now on, you're Joe Joe. I went, okay. Deborah Jo, the youngest of seven children, was born and raised in a Christian family from rural Mississippi. She had a passion for music, sang in her church choir, and studied music and voice at the University of Mississippi. Then, her father died of a heart attack at age 51. How'd that affect you? Traumatic. I loved him so much. Deborah always blamed God for taking him too soon. She didn't go back to school and struggled to get her life back together. But she found comfort and acceptance working as a backup singer. Her fortunes changed one night at a Leonard Skinner concert. Word was out that the band was looking for touring backup singers, and Deborah made her way backstage. And I went into this room, and there was Ronnie Van Zant, the lead singer for Skinner. So I walked through the door, and Ronnie looked at me, and he tipped his hat, he smiled, and tipped his hat back, and he said, "She'll do just fine." And he hired me on the spot. I but never had to sing for him. Never had to sing for him. Well, why did that happen? Because I think I was just destined to. It was destined so to be. You... Now you're with Leonard Skinner, a big time deal. I mean, you right. you guys played for thousands of people. 350,000 was the biggest gig I played with them. Good grief. Amazing. How did you feel about all that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, did, did you buy into the whole lifestyle with it? Yes. And with all the sex, drugs, rock and roll, to use the phrase? Yes. The whole deal, ran the world? Three times. Three times around the world? Very successful. Very successful. Every show we ever played was sold out. Really? Yeah. Did you get into the drug thing too? Yes. What did this do to your life? Uh, disintegrated it. Um, after my dad died, I got mad at God. Mm. And um, so I shut the door to God, and that opened the door to the devil wide open. For a short time, the band decided to tour without backup singers, but by the fall of 1977, they had reconsidered and requested that Deborah rejoin them on their current tour. Ronnie asked her to meet them immediately in Greenville, South Carolina. Well, while I was talking to him on the phone, I heard this one word, and it, that word was wait. You, you, wait. You heard that wait. inside you? Yeah, wait. She agreed to meet them a few days later at the Little Rock show. Then that night... You had a dream. Yes. What was the dream? I saw the plane crash. Did you know it was the Lord at the no. time? You just had the dream of no, a plane it's crash. No, it's like a, the most vivid dream I've ever had. It was like a, in Technicolor. And I saw the plane, you know, and then I saw it smack the ground. I was like, oh, and I woke up screaming, and my mom ran in there. She said, honey, what in the world's wrong? And I said, mom, I dreamed the plane crashed. And she said, it's just a dream. Go back to sleep. And I thought, I can't. The next evening, the plane carrying 26 people, Leonard Skinner and their entourage, crashed in Mississippi. Six people, including lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, and his sister, fellow backup singer Cassie Gaines, were killed. Deborah remembers getting a hysterical call from her brother. He said, the plane has crashed and Ronnie is dead. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, it was horrible. And right then, I looked on the on the television, the news, you know, special bulletin, Leonard Skinner plane crashed, and, and I was like, oh my God, you know, it's like I had been drinking him, you know, sobered up like boom. How did you reflect on your own personal life at that point? I just thought, why have I been spared? Deborah's survivor guilt was fueled by drugs and alcohol. She stopped singing altogether. She married in 1981. But the relationship turned abusive, and her depression intensified. She gave birth to a son in 1983 and decided there had to be a better life for her family. One day, I just got up, and I said, I'm going to church. So I got my son ready. He was just a little thing. 
got him ready, put him in the nursery, and went and sat in the back row of that church that day. I didn't know anybody. And I thought, God, if you don't help me, there's no hope for me. Because, you know, I had everything, seemingly, but I was the most miserable person on the face of the earth. And that little preacher, he got up there, and he was, you know, I don't remember anything he said. I don't remember anything the choir sang. I just know that all through that service, the Lord was speaking to me, and he was saying, Child, I love you. I will forgive you. Come home to me, child. Come home to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. I died for you. Let me, let me help you. Come to me, child. All during that service. So during that invitation that day, I didn't walk. I ran. In the front of the whole church. In the whole church. It didn't I, matter. I, I could care less. You know, I had a divine encounter. Really? With the king of the universe. Yeah, and I said, Lord, Lord, please forgive me because I made the biggest mess of my life. And you know the good thing about it, he forgave me. You could tell right away. Right away. And not only did he forgive me, but he forgot the whole dirty mess. Deborah finally found in Christ the peace and love she'd been chasing in the world of rock and roll. It's been over 20 years, and today she lives with her husband and teenage daughter in Alabama. She says God has even restored her music career with her latest release, I Will Obey. Deborah is eternally grateful for one persistent church lady from Alabama that convinced her to sing again after becoming a Christian. Did you go to the church and sing? Yeah, she wouldn't take no for that. You didn't go to the church and sing Sweet Home Alabama, did you? No, but I sang Sweet Home Up in Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I sanctified it a little bit. <laughs> what a life, and it ain't over. That's right. You know what? Uh, the Lord gave me a chorus about that. Oh. It ain't over till it's over. Don't give up. Don't give in, press on, my friend. It's not your battle. Just believe what he's promised. God is good. He will keep you till the end.